Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too. You're probably aware of the excellent Limbo from developer Play Dead. The indie game captured audiences' attention with its moody atmosphere, striking art style, and fearless resolve to kill its adorable big-headed protagonist in as many gruesome ways as possible. Play Dead wasn't content to rest on its laurels, however, and it went back to work, taking years to come up with more ways to kill children, except this time in color. The result? is inside. Spoilers will follow, by the way. The story is presented very sparsely, but there are some genuinely surprising twists that you should really experience firsthand. Go on and play it if you plan on ever doing it, you can knock it out in an afternoon. Otherwise, I'll recap. Inside is the story of a boy and his blog. No, 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 not, not that one. This one. Yeah. The game begins in media res, with a young boy dropping onto the scene in the middle of the woods. You're given no sense of purpose when you begin, aside from the instinct developed in all of us by Super Mario to run right. No, I said right. There you go. What starts as an epic escape from a group of very unfriendly agents and their dogs eventually transforms into an infiltration mission. The boy makes his way inside a heavily guarded research facility with strategic line dancing, meeting scary naked vampires and water that has absolutely no respect for gravity. He even employs the help of some seemingly mindless human beings, whom he controls with a special helmet. Eventually, after some trial and error and puzzle solving, you discover that your mission all along has been to attempt to rescue... this. It thanks you for your trouble by absorbing you into its messy flesh mass like meat silly putty, and then it escapes from the facility and into your nightmares forever. I think a lot of people probably scratch their heads at that ending. What on earth was that all about? The developers were careful to give you just enough information to be able to piece it together, but they laid those answers out subtly and carefully along the way. It all boils down to mind control. Scientists and governments have been interested in mind control for a long time. One of the most well-known top secret operations by the CIA was MK Ultra, a series of projects that toe the line between questionably ethical and straight up illegal. MK Ultra sought to control people's actions using hypnosis, sensory deprivation, torture, and drugs like LSD. The brain is remarkably resilient, but highly susceptible to outside influences. When it comes to sensory deprivation, for instance, researchers found a marked decrease in test subjects' mental capacity to do simple arithmetic and word association after only a few hours cut off from outside stimuli. They also reported hallucinating strange lights and shapes, and even after leaving the sensory deprivation chamber, their hallucinations persisted for a time. All that to say, the brain is malleable. With the right chemical cocktail or stimulus, the activity in the brain can be actively altered. But while LSD can make you trip balls, it can't make you do someone's bidding. MKUltra produced a lot of fodder for your conspiracy theory-loving uncle, but never achieved mind control. At least, that's what they want you to think. So maybe drugs aren't the answer. They never are, kids. Unless the question is, what is never the answer? Maybe technology can let us hack into brains instead. That's the route play Deadwind, with our young protagonist periodically donning a futuristic sci-fi helmet, which he uses to control the minds of otherwise docile humans he encounters throughout the game. Our growing understanding of how networks, um, work, is helping us manipulate the most complex network of all, your mind. See, the brain is similar in structure to a computer network, systems connected to systems, working together to perform tasks. If the colander our protagonist puts on his head allows him to hack into the minds of his less intellectual friends, then, in theory, he could exercise control over their actions. At a basic level, it doesn't sound too complicated. In order to control the activity in an area of the brain, you need to stimulate it with energy. Scientists are already using this sort of direct injection method to treat some conditions, such as Parkinson's disease. In that example, energy is driven to the basal ganglia region of the brain, which is partially responsible for body movement. They are then able to restrict motion in the patient's body. So this opens the door for more direct control over a person's mind, and therefore their actions. In fact, our technology today is getting closer to the sort that the boy uses to control a parade of mindless idiots. In a 2013 demonstration, a group of researchers proved that brain-to-brain -brain communication and control was possible. One person sent their thoughts to a computer, which was able to control the hand movement of someone else sitting nearly a kilometer away. So how on earth did they do that? Person A sat in a room wearing what's called an electroencephalography cap, not too far off from Inside's brain control helmet. This cap picked up brain signals and relayed them to a computer. The computer acted as an intermediary, interpreting the signals and translating them to electric impulses, which were then fired along to person B. This person wore a swimming cap, wired with a transcranial magnetic stimulation coil placed near the part of the brain responsible for hand motion. All person A had to do was think about moving their hand, and person B's hand started twitching. 
The tech still has a ways to go. The team found a wildly varying success rate between 25 and 83 percent, but it's remarkable nonetheless. If you watched all this and you're still confused by that ending, I don't blame you. It's not super obvious, but the idea seems to be that just as the boy can use mind control helmets to control human drones and can even force one to mind control another, so too is this boy himself being controlled by the blob. It actually presents an interesting dissection of the idea of control, since ultimately you, the player, are the one inputting the commands and making the boy move. Maybe Inside wants us to believe that deep down, we're all raging blob monsters of melded human flesh and bone. Sounds about right to me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, be sure to show your love by clicking like and subscribe. Drop us a comment below to suggest a game for us to cover next, and please feel free to share this video with your friends. And don't forget to keep on playing.